Hello everyone, my name is Tintin, and today I'll be your tour guide on an extraordinary cosmic expedition to the furthest edges of space and time. So hop on the spaceship, fasten your seatbelt, and enjoy! We journey back to the beginning of time, 13.8 billion years ago, when the universe came to existence at the moment of the Big Bang. Let me guess what's in your mind. A huge explosion! Actually, the Big Bang refers to the start of an expansion of space rather than any definitive explosion, but I don't blame you because the term is pretty misleading. So basically, the universe was extremely dense, hot, and minuscule at the beginning, and some unknown mechanism caused it to expand. About 10 to the negative 36 seconds after the Big Bang, a faster than light cosmic expansion occurred, called inflation which blew our observable universe up from much smaller than an atom to the size of a grain of sand. It beautifully explains many of the astronomical observations that previous Big Bang theories failed to address. It describes how the universe looks pretty much the same in all directions on a large scale because inflation smoothened space out like how clothes are de-wrinkled after being ironed. Meanwhile, when the universe was minuscule, there are constant temporary changes of energy on a microscopic level called quantum fluctuations, visualized by this squiggly image on the left. These fluctuations got wildly amplified during inflation, which led to sufficient variations of matter in space, essential to the formation of galaxies and stars and planets and of course our lives. Thank goodness inflation happened. Unfortunately, there is no direct evidence of inflation as of right now. Current theory predicts that inflation would create ripples in space-time called gravitational waves that should be detected in the near future by more advanced detectors. Let's move on to the next era, antimatter. Wow, is this science fiction? No, this is real physics. Basically, for every ordinary particle, there is an antiparticle counterpart with the same mass and opposite charge. For instance, a proton has a positive charge and an antiproton with the exact same mass has a negative charge. A pair of particle and antiparticle can annihilate into energy as light or be produced by light, a process described by Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared that describes how mass and energy are equivalent quantities. This process can be catastrophic. The annihilation of one kilogram of matter and one kilogram of antimatter can produce as much power as 2,000 nuclear bombs dropped in Nagasaki in World War II. Here comes some scientific fantasy. The villains in Dan Brown's famous novels Angels and Demons stole some antimatter from a scientific lab to destroy the Vatican. Another famous example is Star Trek, which uses particle-antiparticle annihilation to feel interstellar travel. However, this remains in the realm of fiction because current technology cannot produce that much antimatter, unfortunately, or I guess fortunately considering the rising tension in international politics. You may wonder, where does all of the antimatter go if each particle has an antiparticle counterpart? This is still one of the greatest mysteries in astrophysics. There was some unknown mechanism that converted a very tiny amount of antimatter into matter so that matter could survive after all antiparticles annihilated with particles. Our next destination is dark matter produced about 10 to the negative 10 second after the Big Bang. Yep, we are far from finishing the first second, and yep, this is not science fiction. Welcome to the dark side of the universe, and spoiler alert, this is only part one. So we know from gravitational law that the further an astronomical object is from the center of a galaxy, the slower it moves. However, astronomers observe something opposite. The orbiting velocities do not decay at all. This implies that there is some extra unseen matter that facilitates this extra gravitational force to speed up the velocities, which is called dark matter. Besides, if dark matter doesn't exist, a lot of objects far from the galaxy's center would fly apart and galaxies wouldn't be as compacted as observed right now. Physicists have hypothesized the weakly interacting massive particles, or WIMPs, as constituents of dark matter, 
but current detectors obtained negative results so far. This remains another great mystery for future astrophysicists. We are leaping towards 10 seconds after the Big Bang, when protons and neutrons started to form atomic nuclei of hydrogen and helium. Interestingly, if protons are just 20% heavier than neutrons, they would have decayed into neutrons and atoms would never have existed. Is it just mere coincidence, or is it the creations of God? You decide that. In this era, the universe was filled with hot, dense soup of nuclei where light couldn't penetrate through. It took the universe another 380,000 years for electrons and nuclei to form neutral atoms. At this point, light could move freely, so this was the first moment the universe was transparent to be captured by our telescope. This image, the cosmic microwave background radiation, depicts the light radiated in the universe 13.4 billion years ago. Just to clarify, the color we see here are not true colors, only for visualizations. As the name implies, the light waves detected are in the range of microwaves, not optical light that our eyes can see. Are you feeling dizzy? When we cruise through hundreds of thousands of years, hold on tight because we're leaping to 9.8 billion years after the Big Bang, when dark energy started dominating the universe. I told you there would be a sequel to our dark side journey. When the universe was in its infancy, dark energy was near to non-existent, yet right now, it takes up 72% of the universe. As space expanded, Ordinary matter and dark matter got diluted, which makes sense to us. However, dark energy is speculated to have a constant density, so that its matter per volume doesn't change, so it increases in amount as space expands. So what's special about dark energy? It is anti-gravity. It causes the cosmic expansion to accelerate, or in other words, the universe expands faster and faster. If the universe is only filled with dark matter and ordinary matter, the cosmic expansion is expected to decelerate because of gravity. Dark energy as of right now is still full of mysteries and remains more or less a hypothetical concept that would explain the accelerating cosmic expansion. Dark energy in the future holds the cosmic fate. If cosmic expansion keeps happening, there might be one day that the universe is so cooled down that activities like star formation are no longer possible and the universe just silently dies, which is called the Big Freeze. Or the universe will expand so much that galaxies, stars, and planets, and even atoms are ripped apart, the complete triumph of dark energy which is called the Big Rip. If dark energy somehow decays, matter would take over and cause the universe to collapse under its own gravity, the Big Crunch. This might trigger a follow-up Big Bang and the entire process recycles. That concludes our journey today. Thank you all of you for joining me. It was quite a ride for me to explore all these fascinating domains of cosmology in the last semester. Throughout the independent study, I was always awestruck with how far we have come in understanding the nature of the universe and the extreme realms of physics, both microscopic and macroscopic. I love living in an era with sophisticated technologies that make new fields of astrophysics research possible. Yet there are just so many mysteries to chase after. As I and Mr. Lake usually told each other, what a time to be alive for astronomy enthusiasts. This independent study has concluded my astronomy exploration at Pomfret on a high note, which ranges from theoretical astrophysics and data science to engineering and observational astronomy. I am convinced that I want to pursue astronomy as a vocation, not just a subject or a future job. I cannot wait to delve into the studies and research of astrophysics in my next four years of college. Thank you so much for joining my expedition today. I hope you stay safe and healthy regardless of where you are.